Hey what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a thriller mystery film, Greta. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a young waitress, Frances, serving customers at a fancy restaurant in New York City. As her shift has ended, Frances has taken the subway to get home. As she reaches her destination, Frances prepares to leave when she finds a dark green handbag. Frances inspects it as she goes out and finds an ID of a middle-aged French woman, Greta. Frances goes to the lost and found the hand the bag, but nobody's there. As the good Samaritan that she is, Frances takes the bag home, where she lives with her best friend, Erica. She holds onto it until she can return it, but Erica dismisses her and goes through its contents. They find cash, among other things, and Erica wants to spend it for some me time, but Frances firmly refuses. Erica doesn't argue with her anymore, and they go to the movies later. But before the film, Frances has tears falling down her cheeks, as she remembers bonding with her mom through watching movies. Sadly, she passed away due to cancer. The following day, Frances successfully finds Greta's address, who invites her into her home to thank her. Not long after she comes in, they hear noises from the wall, which Greta claims are from her neighbor, remodeling their house. Greta goes near her piano, and shouts to her neighbor for a little courtesy, which they give her. After that, she returns to Frances. As they drink their tea, the women get to know each other. Greta's husband has long since passed away, while her daughter is living in Paris. Greta changes the subject and plays for Frances, as she shares how her husband inspired her to become a piano teacher. As she ends up playing her husband's favorite song, Frances senses that Greta is lonely. She changes the subject, and offers to help her find a dog to be her companion. Greta kindly refuses her offer, but Frances leaves her phone number if she changes her mind, before going. Sure enough, later that night, Greta contacts her, and accepts her offer to find a dog. Frances subtly comments about the danger of going out with a stranger, but Frances ignores it. Later that weekend, the two go dog shopping, and Greta takes home an old dog. Over the next few days, Greta continues to contact Frances even at night, when she's asleep. Frances dismisses her strange behavior, as she knows that Greta needs someone in her life. Soon enough, the two strike up a bit of friendship. However, her friendship with Greta slowly affects her friendship negatively with Erica. Erica has had enough of Frances ditching their plans and going out more with Greta. Erica snaps and insults Frances that her friendship with Greta is getting weirder and weirder. On top of that, she claims that Frances only uses Greta as her maternal substitute, which dramatically offends Frances. Before it escalates, Frances leaves and goes to Greta's house. As they prepare for dinner, Frances looks for candles in one of Greta's cabinets, only to hit a startling discovery. It's full of multiple identical handbags, with the exact contents inside everyone. She finds two bags with sticky notes on the back, where her name and contact number are on them, along with a woman named Samantha. Frances keeps herself calm, but she cannot hide her uncomfortableness during dinner. So she lies about not feeling well to leave and goes home, where she shares her discovery with Erica. After discovering that, Frances stops answering her calls and messages. But then Greta starts showing up at the restaurant she's working at. Frances asks her boss to get rid of Greta, but when he refuses, she has no choice but to face the woman she's been avoiding by herself. Frances bravely confronts her about finding the other handbags, ends their friendship, and firmly tells her not to return. However, Greta continues to contact her, leaving explanations about what she did in the voicemail, even sending her flowers as an apology. However, Greta won't leave her alone. She begins harassing Frances by standing outside the restaurant to stare at her for hours, and this freaks her out big time that she even calls the police. To her dismay, the police cannot do anything, as Greta has not made threats or any indications that she will attack, and since it is a public area, she has the right to stand there. This causes her to be paranoid, so she repeatedly checks the area for any sign of Greta, before leaving the restaurant. But then, as she enters the subway, Greta surprises her. So she quickly gets off out of fear as the door closes. Frances watches Greta leaves inside the train, but as she reaches her apartment floor, Greta's already there, standing and waiting for her. Greta wants them to start again, but when Frances refuses to be a part of her crazy life, Greta's expression changes. She claims that people cannot keep leaving her, and then spits the bubble gum on Frances' hair, before storming out of the building. As soon as Erica comes home and finds out about this, she takes Frances to the police station to get a restraining order. However, the officer informs them that it could take months to file, as it's overcrowded. The following day, Frances goes to the dog shelter, to ask how to remove a dog from home. However, she needs proof of mistreatment to remove the dog from Greta's care. Although scared of Greta, Frances gets brave, and goes to her home to remove the dog herself. However, when she hears the door unlocking, she hides behind the trash bins, and watches as Greta leaves with the dog. There she finds letters for Greta's daughter, but in Paris, as the envelopes will return to the sender. Frances then attempts to contact her daughter repeatedly, but she always goes straight to the voicemail. And then one night, she's alone as Erica is out. While checking if Greta is outside their apartment building through the windows, Frances answers a phone call from her dad through their house phone. 
Francis's relationship with him is a bit strained, as he buries himself in work after his wife's death as a way of moving on. As their conversation gets heated, Francis receives a message from Greta. It is a picture of Erica in a bar, meaning that Greta is stalking her best friend. She immediately drops the phone call with her dad and calls Erica in panic, telling her to leave the bar as Greta is stalking her. Francis stays on the phone with Erica until she gets somewhere safe. As this happens, Greta keeps sending pictures of Erica, each one getting closer and closer to her. Fear also strikes Erica, so she immediately gets on a bus that pulls up in front of her. However, Greta follows her there too, so as she spots her finally, Erica tells her that she needs help because she's sick. After that, she gets off the bus and stops at a landmark to wait for Francis. But then, she sees Greta standing across from her. But before she can attack her, Francis' cab stops right in front of her. Erica quickly joins Francis, escaping Greta. The following day, Francis receives a phone call from a woman she met later that rainy day at a coffee shop. The woman informs her that Greta's daughter is already dead. She's been the daughter's addiction counselor for six years. Greta's daughter killed herself four years ago and had never been to France, contrary to what Greta claims. Also, Greta is not a French woman, or she came from Hungary. Later that day, while she's at work, Francis's dad calls and tells her that Erica has told him what has been happening. Francis ends the phone call as her boss orders her and returns to work. However, she must attend to Greta, who made a reservation, despite informing her boss that Greta has been harassing her. So Francis instructs another waitress to call the cops. As she gives Greta her order, Greta insists that she only wants to talk. But when Francis refuses, she snaps. Greta torments Francis by causing a scene, smashing the wine glass and then turning the table over. She then brings up Francis's mother, claiming she had to die for them to meet. She starts advancing at Francis, who runs into the kitchen in fear for her life. Fortunately, the restaurant staff steps in and restrains Greta until the police arrive to take her away. However, Francis learns Greta was released from police custody the following day. Because of this, Francis's dad wants her to come with him, but Francis doesn't want to. So Erica suggests the slow fade technique to her. She explains that she goes to Greta, apologizes, and says that the problem is her, not Greta, and she needs to deal with her issues. Francis takes her chance with this, but she meets Greta at a church, just in case. She informs Greta that she will leave tomorrow to think things over, and they will meet when she returns. Greta then gives her a long and unsettling hug, which she endures before leaving. As she comes home, Greta watches the dog take the milk she drugged while thinking of Francis. The plan seems to work as Greta doesn't bother her, or so she thought. One day, while drinking her coffee, she hears the water dropping onto the floor. So she asks Erica if she watered the plants, but then she starts feeling dizzy. Francis sees Greta emerging from her bedroom as she loses her strength and her vision blurry. Greta lies to the cab driver, saying that Francis is her niece and is very ill. She drags a drum Francis into her home and takes her phone, before locking her into a toy chest in a secret room behind her piano. Francis suddenly wakes up in her apartment. She's in panic, but feels relieved after finding Erica's there with her. After packing her stuff, Francis bids goodbye to Erica, as her dad is already waiting outside. She enters the elevator to leave, but the lift goes lower than the ground floor, and the walls start closing in on her, almost crashing her. It turns out, it was a dream, and Francis wakes up, locked in the toy chest. She repeatedly screams to be let out while banging on the door, and Greta goes to do so, making it seem like a punishment for lying about leaving town. Francis begs her not to close the toy chest again. Greta agrees, but she keeps her locked up in that room. Greta then starts playing the piano, while Francis tries to find a way to escape, but the door and the windows are shut tightly. Francis can only cry in hopelessness when she sees Samantha's ID. Francis realizes that Samantha was kept as a prisoner in the same room she's in, which adds to her lack of hope. Greta goes through Francis' phone and sends photos to Francis' dad from the gallery, making it seem that she's on vacation with Erica. Greta does the same to Erica, making her believe that Francis has the time of her life with her dad. She listens to the dad's voice messages, while keeping Francis hostage for an unspecified amount of time, probably weeks. One afternoon, Francis' dad goes to the city to see his daughter, but he and Erica are confused, because Francis is supposed to be on vacation with them. Reality quickly sinks in, and they both realize that something is wrong. Meanwhile, Greta forces Francis to play the piano. On the other hand, Francis' dad goes to the police to help find his daughter. The detective pulls up Greta's file, revealing that she was a nurse who mistreated and possibly killed patients, and it was believed that she returned to Hungary. He wants his daughter to be found at any costs. At that same time, Greta keeps Francis hostage by drugging her every piano session. One day while they're making cookies, as Greta fiddles with the cookie cutter, Francis slams a rolling pin down on her hand, severing Greta's pinky finger. As Greta screams in pain, Francis whacks her over the head with the pin, rendering her unconscious and injured. After that, Francis immediately runs to escape, but all the doors and windows are locked. In a desperate attempt to be freed, Francis runs to the basement, only to find a dying Samantha. 
She gasped for air for the last time before dying, and then Greta suddenly appears and suffocates Francis until she passes out. Then she ties Francis to the bed and locks her up. The following day, the detective finds Greta's address and asks about Francis. Greta lies that she hasn't seen Francis for a while. Greta then invites him inside. But as soon as Francis hears her name, she tries to get his attention by banging on the bed, making the pendulum on the piano move. Greta covers the banging sound by playing music and claiming that her dog causes the noise. She goes upstairs to feed it, so the detective walks toward the piano and realizes that there's someone behind the wall. He moves the piano aside to free Francis. But before he can do so, Greta comes running barefoot and injects the detective with some kind of sedative. As he slowly loses his consciousness, the detective repeatedly shoots Greta, but the bullets disappointingly miss her. Seconds later, the detective drops to the floor, unconscious. But then Greta takes his gun and kills him with the remaining bullets. After that, she swirls around, hopping on her toes, dancing to one of Choplin's music. Meanwhile, Francis can only cry in sadness. Not long after, Greta dumps his body in a bag with chemical quicklime and throws him into the basement. After that, she cleans the literal bloody mess on her floor and fixes the bullet holes on the wall. As she does so, she tells Francis how her green leather bags brought companies to her and ended her eternity of loneliness. The following day, Greta returns to the subway and plants her green leather bag to find her next victim. As expected, a young woman with curly brown hair takes the bag as she leaves the subway and goes to Greta's address to return it. Greta gives her a cup of coffee as they chat, but then the pendulum begins moving again from Francis's continuous banging. Greta tells the young woman the same lie she told Francis, that it's the neighbors remodeling their house. She steps away for a moment and shouts for a courtesy before returning to chat with the young woman. Suddenly, Greta begins feeling disoriented. But before she loses consciousness, the young woman reveals her true identity. Erica takes off her wig and tells Greta that she drummed her, just like what she did to Francis. As Greta finally faints, Francis bangs the bed more aggressively, until Erica finally hears the pendulum ticking. Erica immediately pulls the piano aside, unlocks the room, and frees Francis. The two friends embrace each other tightly, and Erica helps Francis get out, when they suddenly hear the piano playing, meaning Greta's awake. Erica goes out despite Francis's warning to find Greta, but as it turns out, it's the music player playing. Erica turns it off, but she checks the other rooms just in case, while Francis steps out. But Greta suddenly grabs her by the throat. She tells Francis that she's her favorite before passing out. Erica comes running, prepared to bludgeon her to death. However, Francis stops her from doing so, and says she has a better idea. The two places Greta in the toy chest and locks it with an Eiffel Tower trinket. The film ends with the ladies leaving the psychopath's den. But unbeknownst to them, Greta has woken up, and she starts bumping the chest lid, causing the trinket to slowly move out, implying that it won't hold Greta for long before the police can show up. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.